This is a uh, wrap up of the September 13th uh, City Council meeting for the City of Grand Rapids. Uh, we began our work session tonight actually not in City Hall. We began it at the new fire hall as the council was able to take a tour of the new fire hall and um, it's not totally done, but pretty much done. I know other groups of uh, Chamber of Commerce has had tours. Uh, and there will be in the month of October, I don't know the dates right now, but I'll certainly announce them when I find out, uh, there will be an opportunity for the public to tour the building uh, during National uh, uh, Fire Fire Week. Uh, so it's, it's a building that was well, you know, designed well functionally, and, um, you know, they, they considered maintenance cost of, uh, of the building itself. It should be a... a stable structure that should serve us well into the future and brings all the fire department equipment under one roof. Uh, it had been parceled out all over town um, as the fire hall next door to us when it was here was designed in the 1960s and had limited space and so only of a few of our trucks uh, were available there and now we uh, have them all in one spot. So. Um, Look, look forward for the opportunity to the public to take a tour in roughly a month here. Uh, the agenda, agenda tonight was uh, relatively short. We had a long consent agenda, um, uh, approving change orders and a lot of hiring uh, of, of part-time staff. Um, and uh, adopting, uh, uh, allowing a public hearing uh, to become up, be coming up at a future meeting, we voted to adopt a resolution calling for that public hearing for the Fifth Street Southwest Reconstruction Project, among other things. Uh, and the, the main items on the regular agenda were two, two hirings. Uh, we appointed Janelle Hekimovich um, to the position of police officer. Janelle has been an employee within the department for a number of years and uh, has gone back to school to get her degree and we had a opening. Uh, she passed her post board and we had an opening and she applied and received the position. So we look forward to uh, her being on staff. She's well thought of both inside and outside the department in, in, in City Hall. Um, then at a previous uh, meeting, we approved a point, uh, approved uh, putting notice out for the hiring of two police captains. And since that time, interviews have taken place. And tonight, we appointed uh, two police captains, uh, which is the next position underneath the chief within the Grand Rapids Department. And those posi positions went to Andy Morgan and uh, Kevin Ott. They both are longtime employees of our department and and will uh, serve the community and the department well. So we congratulate those two. Um, we authorized a quit claim deed transferring a title of a parcel that's been vacant since 1910 and unsellable. Um, it, it was raised and uh, returned to the city. It's been uh, unsellable. So tonight um, we approved the quit claim deed that transferred the title and we turned it over to the Grand Rapids Economic Development Authority for, for their marketing. It's in a nice business location, um, kind of just north of Ray's Sport and Marine. And uh, we authorized the removal of levied assessments so that it can sell. Then we had a public hearing considering adopting a number of changes within our ordinances and uh, land development regulations. They were uh, a combination of um, you know, things that we look at every year or two just to see if anything needs to be tweaked. There are some like that, and there are some maybe more uh, significant changes. Um, you know, one, one item was as minute as just changing where the zoning map should be located within City Hall. Uh, that hadn't been updated, uh, and so we, we just uh, changed the wording so that it's uh, reflecting where the zoning map actually is. Another one was changing uh, the term beauty salon to salon. Um, but now we will allow, we voted to allow salons and barbershops um, 
in retail areas, general business, central business district, business parks, where before it was regulated to kind of a catch-all category, so we, we made that more sp specific. And then with additional restrictions, we are allowing them in R3 and R4 zones. So for example, Manor House and Majestic Pines, um, and they've been operating for years, but we made sure that the uh, new wording uh, allowed for that and, and as we move forward. Uh, maybe the more significant things are uh, as part of the uh, multiple things that we approved under that uh, ordinance is parking lot designs. Uh, we are now requiring, uh, we're grandfathering current places in, but uh, for future commercial developments will now have to have uh, more feet from the uh, from a corner on the road um, to, to enter their to enter their parking lot so don't, not picking on any particular business I'll just give an example people can relate to uh, McDonald's as you turn off highway 169 I can't remember the amount of feet that you turn and then all of a sudden you're turning into their parking lot uh, they'll be grandfathered in so no problem with them but um, in the future, we'll have buildings required uh, a little more distance from the from the turn before you enter their parking lot. Um, there was also kind of an update on the use of car wash. Uh, how many stacking spaces are required uh, before people, you know, so people aren't blocking the street? Uh, current, if you have a single building, it's three stacking spaces. Those that have uh, are an accessory building to another site, for example, the holiday car wash require four. Um, the proposal was to, and what we voted was to require six stacking spaces in the future. Um, we looked at we looked at um, best practice around the state. It ranged from from four to thirty. Most were in the four to ten range. So we are going to require six from here on out. And the last item on that was uh, we, we uh, put in place a new category um, within the rural residential area of, of uh, what we call grower stands to separate them from the rules from farm stands. So many of you are familiar with farm stands being located in parking lots across the city. Uh, for example, Clayton's uh, in, the, in the Glens Army Navy parking lot. Um, this doesn't affect them. This affects... Um, Places in rural residential area, and I'll just there's probably more examples, but I'll just use the example of Brindlewood, Brindlewood Farm. Um, this would allow them, and they've been they've been allowing it under a different part of the ordinance, um, but this require this uh, allows for a separate category uh, so that they can have a stand on their property to sell sell their goods. Um, there are restrictions on the size uh, for parking. Um, the amount of non-site items that are for sale, so they can't just open up a general store um, along with their items, uh, adequate parking on site, and the size of the signs. But uh, we now have a category for that rather than trying to fit it in under something else. Um, so with that, that was, the, uh, that was the recap of the regular meeting, and we meet again. We have a work session next week. Uh, both on both for the budget for next year and plans for the Forest Lake school site that has been transferred or will be transferred to the city. Uh, so we will be discussing that. But we will meet again in two weeks on Monday, September 27th. I hope everybody has a has had a nice start to the fall and enjoys the warm weather as much warm weather as we can uh, before we can't. So uh, with that, uh, thank you.